pipes for the calliope are one inch, seven eighths, three quarter, and five eighths outside diameter. And the wall thickness for the pipe that I have is one sixteenth of an inch thick. You have a relatively small sketch here to go by. It tells you that all of the notches are cut seven inches from the bottom of the pipe. And then it tells you what the height and depth of the cut are. That means that the notch is going to be measured from here to the top of the notch, not the opening. And the depth is from the face back here to this point. And you're probably going to end up with a little curve here because your saw blade and your files won't get back into this corner. When you go to page 114, it gives you the dimensions for all 25 pipes, the overall length, and then the height and the depth for the notches for each size pipe. I've drawn some marking gauges and printed them on the 3D printer. And this one is for one inch. And this is the height of the notch. And a line across here, this would be the depth. For anyone that's interested in building this calliope, these marking gauges will be on Thingiverse under my name. First thing you have to do is locate the bottom of the notch or the mouth and this is seven inches from the bottom of the pipe and you can come along here and just make a straight line you take your marking gauge you put the bottom of it on this bottom line and you center that you hold down on it and I take a sharp instrument and I scratch a line and I locate the bottom of this gauge on both sides and I locate the top. You do not scratch the line through here because that will end up being a curved line. I go back with a pencil and I mark those scratch marks a little easier to see. Come here with straight edge and you locate those two points. Draw a line. Do the same thing on this side. And that will be the notch that you're going to cut. You'll come in here with a saw blade at an angle and you'll cut this out and you try to stay well away from the line on the inside and true it up with flat and triangular files. I don't intend to have videos on me making these because I do not want to be distracted by the camera and screw up one of these pipes. I will go through the basics. I've made this cut just to give this thing a little bit of tooth so I can start cutting at an angle, otherwise this thing keeps wanting to slide down this way. It ain't pretty, but that's the starting point. Next I come along with a double cut file. I remove most of this material. I use a triangular file holding one face straight up and down. So I come right up to that bottom line. I keep checking that with a square. Make sure that that cut is at right angles to this pipe. 
As I'm filing this, I take a flat blade or the blade of this square. I put it on there and I hold it in with my thumb. I look to see that I'm making contact here and over here at the same time. And I know that's in a perfect plane. And I, I know where my end stop is on this side and this side. I keep coming back and I check my dimension here. And on this one inch pipe, I'm shooting for that to be 5 8 And I look down at the edge of my cut and I'm checking it from this outside edge to this point is my depth and in this case it's 5 16 I've done four of these so far and this is my last one inch pipe only 20 more to go you take this pipe and you turn it into vice until you can see a reflection of an overhead light. As you bring a file across that, you can watch and see that you're getting the same surface texture or shine. As you get ready to complete this cut, you can come along with a smaller, finer file. Dress that out a little bit. In the course of cutting this, I have checked these about 30 times. Check that one. Cut a little bit, come out here, take it out of the vise, put this blade on here, and make sure that this is flat here and here at the same time. So I know that that's absolutely square with this piece of pipe. When you get done, I take a sharp number 11 exacto blade and I come in here and I trim this little piece of swarf that has developed on the inside edge of the pipe. Trim it down. Deburr that so you don't get cut. And I'm not getting too carried away with that because I want that to remain a sharp edge, get the best sound quality out of the pipe. I take an earlier pipe and hold it up to this, verify that they're the same. Should be a nice little equilateral triangle in there. That pipe is complete. One other thing I will mention, you've used this little marking jig to mark this edge and this edge and the top. Now sometimes, as in this case, if I cut a little bit too far with the hacksaw, or if the filing got a little bit off-center, this pipe is round. It doesn't care where this is cut, as long as it's cut the right distance from the top, and that this is farmed correctly. So if I started to get a little bit too far over here, which I did, then I'm sneaking up on this opening of the mouth. This is square. That's a given. You file that and get it square. But if I was a little bit too far over here, then I back off of this point. And you can see that what was center has shifted a little bit over to here. That's fine. All five of the one inch pipes have been cut. For these five cuts, I spent maybe eight hours I've never done it before. I don't have any spare pipe and I did not want to get in a hurry.